So today is Mother's Day. Uh, before we start, I'm, I'm going to make you laugh a little bit. Uh, I, I read somewhere, it was saying that um, we rely differently to our mothers uh, depending on our age. At some age, we adore our mothers. At other ages, it's a totally different story. At age four, we believe that only our mothers can do this. Amen. Our mothers can do anything. At age 12, mom does not know everything. <laughs> Two years later, at age 14, mom does not know anything. <laughs> at age 18, mom is backward. Ooh. At age 25, mom knows a few things. <laughs> at age 35, before we decide, let's get mom's opinion. <laughs> At age 45, I wonder what my mom will say about this. And at age 65, I wish I could talk to my mom one more time again. So regardless of your age, okay, mom knows everything. <laughs> it is the same mom, she did not change from four years old to 65 years old. She knows everything. Amen. Amen. So let's quickly go to our book. Thank you, all the kids. Today we're going to read from uh, the book of Samuel, the first book of Samuel, um, chapter 1. It's a long reading, so um, pay attention. Thank God we have many kids. Amen. 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 First Samuel chapter 1. We're talking about the birth of, of Samuel, the prophet. There was a certain man from Ramatam, a Zup fight from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zop, and Ephra Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Han Hannah, and the other one, Panana, or Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Years after this man went up from his town to worship and sacrificed the Lord Almighty at Shalom, where Hopni and Penanas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portion of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all his sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went, on, this went on years after years. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten son, son, sons? That was the husband talking. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, 
Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost on the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Anna prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Pour away your wine. No, so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and, gr and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the Lord of Israel grant you what you have asked him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the, the next month, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Hallelujah. I know it was a long reading. It's important, it's crucial. If you're here, and especially women, because this is your day, your special day, please listen to what I'm about to say. It's important, it has been put in my heart by the Lord. Amen. This entire book talks about the story of a man called Elkanah, who had two wives, Hannah and Panana, Penina. I think it's Penina. <laughs> Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Just the summary of this whole reading. In our life, and especially in the life of our mothers, there is something that we all know called expectations. Every mother, every woman had, an, had expectations, many expectations, believe me. Amen. Some are historical expectations, like cooking, Everyone expects the mother to cook. Even if you are not a mother yet, everyone expects you to know how to cook, to know how to clean, to know how to take care of the house, and to bear children as well. And those children must be particularly boys because they carry on the family's name. That's the reason in the Bible they will say, Penina had 10 children, had 10 boys, but she had more than 10. But they look at who is going to carry the name, who is going to fight for the family. Amen. But when you come now to our time, those expectations did not change. We're still expecting women to know how to cook, to clean, to bear children. And on top of that, 
We want them to be educated and to earn a competitive salary to bring money home. Hallelujah. But it's not done yet. We want them to remain beautiful. Amen. In the morning, beautiful. In the evening, be at night, beautiful. At all time. Hallelujah. Am I right? Yes. At all time. Go work, bring money. We need food on the table. I mean everything. Amen. And then bear children as well. The lady we're talking about, Hannah, all of that did not mean nothing for her because she had an issue. I can say she had only one expectation, have a boy. She was not praying for, for children anymore. She was just praying for a son. If at least I could have one son. She believed God for a child. She prayed for a child. She wanted a son. In the Jewish tradition, a woman who did not have kids was considered cursed. She was cursed. She must have done something wrong. She was full of sins. It was not possible. And this lady, we just read, I did not hear anything that she has done wrong. Instead, what I understand, she was a prayerful woman, but she did not have children. Everyone very quickly knew and understood where the problem was. Who was the problem? When a couple does not have kids, they look at the husband and then they look at the, the wife. They want to know who is the problem. And the most of the time, they say it's a, it's a woman. I don't know why, but that's what people say. In this situation here, we know who the problem was. Who had the problem? It was Hannah. Because Elkanah had children with another woman. Okay. This was a very, very long time ago. This was a time where men could have wives. Okay. It's a very long time ago. Okay? Amen. It was before the new covenant. Okay, just to be safe. Okay? Nowadays, it's not acceptable. And there is a lot of things we don't understand. When your brother passes away, you were obligated to marry his wife too and continue to have kids with her. I don't know if that was the situation, I don't know where Penina is coming from, but all that I know, she was Elkanah's wife, and then they had kids too. Okay? This is not something we're asking people to go and do the same, no. Amen? Just to make that clear. So, Hannah herself knew that there was a problem. Because she did not have children. But when you read carefully, you will understand that she did not give up on thinking that she can bear kids, uh, children. Hallelujah. You may probably think she was a problem, a problem, or she had a problem, because she was not able to, to, have, to, to give birth. But herself, herself kept praying, kept believing, and kept asking. That means herself did not believe there was something wrong with her. She was told by everyone. She was told by neighbors. She was told by parents. Especially since Penina was giving birth, I mean, at a high rate. It's like every year. <laughs> Amen? So she was told all the time that you are the problem. There is something wrong with you. You are a cursed woman. 
She knew that. But her behavior is something we have to understand today and we have to copy. Everything that she heard did not stop her believing that she was not a problem. Evidence, facts, did not stop her belief that there was nothing wrong with her. And she kept asking God. Because only God is in control here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. She asked for something that was beyond her own control. If you're here, you listen to this message. Today or another day. I want to make clear that life will throw things at you that you cannot control. Hannah could not control what was happening. She did not want, she did not like it at all, and she could not control it. But it was happening. But there was nothing wrong with her. And I want to tell someone today, you are 30 years old, or more, and you're still single. There is nothing wrong with you. Oh, I was expecting more. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know they are coming. They are promising to marry you. And for some reason, they keep going away. Some, they will bring rings, and then they take them back again. There is nothing wrong with you. Hallelujah. At work, you think you don't qualify. Hmm? I'm telling you today, you, there is nothing wrong with you. Amen. Hallelujah. You have all the diplomas, two or three. I mean, your curriculum is it's just full, but you are unable to, to, to land this dream job. And the people are looking at you. What's wrong with this brother? How come you cannot have a good job? Let me tell you, there is nothing wrong with you. You're married, you have kids. Some are behaving the way that they do. Some are even mentally challenged. Some are handicapped from, from, from birth. And then everyone, even your neighbors, they are looking at you. What's wrong with this couple over there? There is nothing wrong with you. Life will throw at you things that you cannot control. They just happen. It is beyond your control. So there is nothing wrong with you. Hannah was married for many years and then did not have a child. For the concubine, the rival, the, the other wife to have at least 10 boys, that means at least 10 years, and then add more kids on top. Amen? So I can say she was married for so many years. And still, she did not believe there was nothing wrong with her. The devil is playing with your mind until you get tired, until you listen to what the devil is saying, and until you believe what the devil is saying, or what the neighbors are saying, and then you give up. And that's the end of you. Brothers and sisters, I'm saying, regardless of your situation, do not give up, because there is nothing wrong with you. Situations are happening beyond your control. Go back to your God. Do not give up. Let your neighbors talk. Let your friends mock you. Let them. They do not have the final say. Because your creator, only him has the final say. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah was provoked, but did not fight back. That's our second lesson here. She was provoked every single day of her life. She was provoked in the house and outside of the house. But not once she stood to fight back. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know if I am provoked that way, if I will let it go. Okay? But do not do what I do. Okay? Just listen to what I'm saying. And all of us, let's do our best. Even when you're provoked, yeah. amen. amen, do not fight back. Those years where it was Jackie Chan all the time are behind us. Amen. amen. Right. We have switched here. We're doing new things. We're doing better things. 
So we already know that Penina had children. She was happy about it. And Hannah had none. You may think Hannah could not. But I will say Hannah did not. Amen. And Penina spent her time mocking her. She was really getting to her nerve every single day for something that Hannah could not control. The verse 6 that we just read here said, Because the Lord has closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. So Hannah, with all of that, was very distressed. But now once she got tempted to fight back, day and night, night and day, she was humiliated. Penina mocked her. They talked down to her. Every day, by everyone, neighbors, all the people around. And then you can understand, these people were religious, they prayed. Every single year, they had to go to this um, religious event where they offer, they pray and then offer stuff. Amen. Every single year. And then she went. Just imagine, if I'm in my house, I can at least stay in my house, I don't need to interact with neighbors. I can hide my shame in my house. Amen? But here, I have to go to a, an event where everyone is coming. The entire village is coming. All the other villages are coming. People who heard about this woman who is unable to have kids are coming too. This was not something easy for her. And then she had to go. I can tell you, she had to go. I do not think she wanted to go. She did not want to go. She did not want to be there. No woman would like to be there when everyone is mocking you. Penina was mocking her in the house. And then when she was outside, it was even worse. Probably Hannah in her mind was saying, I wish my husband did not have this second wife. You know, it could be fine, we will go together hand in hand, and no one is mocking me, and I'm fine. We don't have kids, but that's fine. But there is this woman. Hallelujah. Because this going to this event was an opportunity for Penina, who, who was second, to bother her to death. Because remember what we just read, sometimes she did not even eat, which means she wanted to die. And this was an opportunity for Penina to show what she was able, because all the kids were coming with mommy and daddy. So it was a, a parade of the kids. And because she had many kids, every year probably she was pregnant. And then she was probably walking like this, touching her belly. Hmm? I need some water. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Oh, okay, let's go again. Oh, hold, hold my hand, hold my hand, hold my hand. Probably. But Hannah was there looking at her. Who do you think was bringing water? Is Hannah. Who do you think was doing everything? It was Hannah. Hallelujah. So she will exaggerate. Oh, bring me water. You don't know what I'm talking about. Because she has not, not given birth. She probably did not know. The Bible is very clear. She bugged her all the way to, to the event. During the event, on the way back, every single day. So she was miserable. And let me tell you, in this situation, she did not need to say anything. Eh? 
some non-verbal com uh, communication were enough to provoke her. Non-verbal. Enough to provoke her, enough to make her miserable. Because when you read, you will see that the husband it was kind of not aware of the provocation. Which means she was doing it in a way that the husband wouldn't know. Just a gesture, a word, a look will provoke her deeply and will hurt her. To the point where Hannah will cry, will be miserable, will lose appetite. But she did not fight back. Brothers and sisters, this word is for us. Amen. It is not for Hannah. It is for us. How we behave when we are provoked. When people mock you. When people think you are incapable of doing something. Even when you cannot have kids, they look down at you. Amen? Amen? Hannah passed the test. Hannah passed the test. Would you? Would you pass this test? I don't know what you're fighting against. I don't know what is bugging you. I don't know what is pulling you down. You lose peace. I don't know. But what I know, the solution to your issue is not fighting back. It's not gossiping or murmuring or manifesting your anger or not talking to people at all because something is wrong in your life. One day I gave you the example of a cousin that I know, cousin of mine. She was not married. She was getting uh, old. I mean, all the youngest were married except her. Going to her house was tough because she was super clean. You don't know if you have to remove your shoes. You, there is nothing you could do that was acceptable for her. You don't even want to eat because you don't know how. I, I, I swear to God, I had never seen her smile during that period until one day God remembered her amen. hallelujah amen. she got married amen. amen she was skinny and then she she gained some weight I went to visit her she was overly happy and whatever you can imagine she will give you food and stuff that's okay What's going on? <laughs> something had switched, something had changed. Her situation was consuming her. Was bringing her down. She was depressed because of a situation. This is just my conclusion because I saw the change. And I know what changed. She wanted to, to be married like her younger uh, uh, sisters and all the entire family, and there was no man for her. Probably men were afraid of her the same way we were. <laughs> but God is, God is great. Things changed, and then she became super happy. Things changed. That's not the behavior we're supposed to have. When something is wrong, the solution is not gossiping, murmuring, but instead, it's being gentle to endure patiently, manifest self-control. When they provoke you, you just smile. They do not know what they're doing. It's not because you have kids that you are a super woman. You have no idea where this, those kids are coming from. We are in God's plans. God has a plan for me. And he has a plan for you. And your plan is different from mine. What you have is to do what God wants you to do. There is a purpose for your life. There was a purpose for Hannah. And let me tell you, there is a purpose for you too. Amen. There is a purpose for you. What you lack today, there is a meaning for that. 
Endure patiently. Manifest self-control when they provoke you. Isaiah 53, verse 7 says, He was painfully abused, but he did not complain. He was silent like a lamb being led to the butcher. As quiet as a sheep having his wool cut off. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 to 24 says, Again I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. Amen. Am I talking to anybody here? <laughs> Do not get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. Even if you write, leave it to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. James uh, chapter 1 verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen. 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 That is all that Hannah is teaching us today. I understand it's difficult. When someone provokes you, you know, you want to react immediately. But if you put everything in God's hands, maybe it's a test, but you don't know. Amen. Amen. Our third lesson, Hannah prayed the solution, not the problem. That's so good. Amen. Amen. Hannah prayed the solution. Hannah did not pray the problem. She said in verse 11, in the first Samuel, If the Lord could hear my prayer and give me a son. Amen. A son was a solution to her issue. Yes. Amen. Amen. A son was a solution. If only God you could hear me and give me a son. But her problem was Penina. Her problem was all these people around who are looking at her. Hallelujah. Mocking her. She did not pray for God to, uh, to deal with them. Amen. Amen. No. She prayed the solution which was a son. Brothers and sisters, I am talking to you. If you do not have a promotion at work, do not ever pray against your boss. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray for that promotion to come their way. Yes. Hallelujah. We have heard testimonies where people stayed faithful to the people who were mistreating them. And what happened? God removed the boss. Yes. Removed the boss. The boss got terminated. And then the person who was mistreated got promoted. I pray for a promotion for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm learning from Hannah. Hannah did not complain to God about everything she was going through. Not once. But she prayed for the solution. She prayed for the son without complaining. Brothers and sisters, this is a call to change your prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh God, you see what I'm going through. On Monday, this is happening to me. Oh, even my car is not working. I don't understand. It's a 28 uh, Honda. I, I, really, everything is happening to me. No. Pray your solution. I'm looking for a job, God. I have done my part. I have my diploma. I graduated. This job is coming. I am calling my job here. I am calling this promotion. Oh, this financial situation. I put an end to it. Oh, hallelujah. That's how our prayers should be. Amen. Hannah stayed focused on the ableness of God, if I can say that. She kept focusing on that. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. My God is the one who will change the situation. Yeah. It may look bad today, but only my God can change it. Yeah. Pray to God. Focus on him. Amen. Hallelujah. She knew very well that her solution 
was in God's hands. Yes. Do you know that the, the thing you're struggling with is in God's hands? Yes. Probably you think, no, I can do this. If I go to school, I work um, better. If I do this, I will have this promotion. But there is a way to have a promotion even if you did not do all of this. Yes. Amen. Yes. There is a way. It is possible. Yes. It is possible. I told you my story when I started working for the government. Um, I did not want the job, but my wife said, you're smart, you, you have to go there. I said, no, I don't want to go there. First of all, I'm struggling with English. Secondly, I have, I have no, I have diplomas, but nothing related to this job. Are you crazy? She said, I think you can still go there. I went there just to have peace at home. <laughs> I, I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me give you more. I applied and then sent my um, application. And then at that time, for some reason, I lost my internet um, connection, which means my application did not go through. Yeah. But did I care? No. <laughs> I had done what she wanted me to do, done. But God Almighty, she came back to me. <laughs> On the last day of uh, the closing of the job, she came back to me saying, okay, uh, did you apply? <laughs> yes, I applied last week. Okay, did you get a sort of confirmation that, you, you, you know, do you have it? Uh, I said, I don't. I said, and then you did not apply? I said, I did. I said, impossible. <laughs> if you submit something, they give you a confirmation. If you don't have a confirmation number, it means you did not apply. She said, okay, now you have to do it again, this time on paper. And you go downtown to the office, you give them your application. I said, my goodness. <laughs> okay, if you want peace, you, certain things you need to do. Amen. If you are not married, please listen. <laughs> it is not Hannah talking, it's me. <laughs> I printed everything, many pages, my goodness, I was about to die. <laughs> and then I went to the office. The mail room was at the main entrance. As soon as you enter on your left, it was the mail room. And then there was a lady who was working in, in there. She was coming out. So she, she just saw me with an envelope. I was probably looking to know where to go. Oh, she said, oh, give this to me. I said, okay. She said, oh, she read, so, oh, okay, I'm going there. I just gave it to her and then I left. When I got home. <laughs> okay, did you apply? Did you, did you get there? Did, uh, I said, yes, I, I was in the building, I was in a building. <laughs> so what did, you, what, what did you do? I said, okay, listen. There was this lady who was passing by and then she asked me the envelope. I gave the envelope to her. <laughs> and then she said, okay, normally they, they stamp, they, they do something. So you have nothing? I said, no. Do you know her? No. <laughs> At that time, I realized I did not even know if she really worked there. She was just coming from, from the office. That's how much I did not like the job. I was afraid. I felt I was not capable of doing the job. And eventually, uh, they called me. They said, oh, you, you forgot something here and stuff. I said, oh, so they got it. So I, I provide the information they wanted. I went through days and days of testing this, testing that, and then I passed everything. I don't know how. <laughs> and then I got hired. Wow. Hallelujah. That was almost 15 years ago. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is great. Amen. God is great. Do not fight. Focus. Just focus on God who makes you able. Amen. If you think within yourself, I'm not able, that's a lie from the enemy. If you believe that, even that application, you're not even going to bring it there. 
let me tell you, there will not be any miracle. Because me being hired in a domain that I did not even study and do super well, very quickly, going from one step to another, like I was born for that, it's just a miracle. So who made me able? Yes. It's God. Yes. Brothers and sisters, yes. rely on God. Yes. Focus on him. Especially when people are saying to you, you are not able, you are the problem. And today I'm saying you are not the problem. Yes. Hallelujah. Talk to God and ask him, God, am I the problem? Hallelujah. He is your creator. Talk to him. Yes. Hallelujah. Do not give up that easily. All that the devil is trying to do when you face what you're facing is just to depress you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. To stress you until you lose your mind. Amen. Amen. You lose your mind to the point where you don't want to go outside, you don't want to take care of yourself, you want to kill yourself. I am very serious. We're, I'm a counselor. So I'm talking about things I know. Do not listen to that voice that is making. Every time you hear something you're not able, go for it. Hey, if it does not work, fine. You can start again. You can try again. At least you have the experience. You did not give up. You did not listen to that voice that was making you unable. Hallelujah. So when something is wrong, Friends, do not isolate yourself. Do not stop working. Do not stay in your bed. Do not depress the lose sleep. Stop looking after yourself. Amen. Amen. Today is a day I'm, I'm asking you to wake up. Amen. It's not probably everyone, but some of us, you need to wake up. Amen. Do not fight physically with people who are provoking you. Oh, it has been 10 years you live in Canada. Others went to school. They have good jobs. They have husbands. They have kids. What about you? Do not fight with them. Bring that to God and ask God what you want. You. Amen. Amen. No physical fight. Not even verbal. Nothing. Do not give that opportunity to the, to the devil. Because it will get very quickly to you and it will bring you like this. It's like a balloon when, when, when you pop it up. Pop! And then... Yeah. Done. Hallelujah. So do not respond to provocation. Instead, pray. Brothers and sisters, pray. Pray. If you, are, you have something really heavy, if you don't know what to do, Give me a call. Amen. Amen. If you don't know my number after the service, come see me. Amen. Let's talk about it. Amen. Amen. It does say here that Hannah went up there to the, the, the religious event. What happened? He met the prophet. This is a person who had been praying for years and years and years, year after year after year after year. But sometimes your blessing will go through another person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Her blessing went through Eli. Am I right? Yes. Mm -hmm. God wanted to bless her, but not directly. It had to go through another person. I'm not saying I have superpower, but we are here for a reason. Yes. Amen. Starting last month, we started what we call here Hezekiah Mandate. We open the church every single day, every afternoon, so people can come pray, soak in the presence of God, and then we have uh, volunteers who are here to help them. Your blessing sometimes will go through another person. There will always be a person here who will stand up in the gap yes. for you. Amen. 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 Until you recover 
but do not isolate yourself. This is a call for you or your relative or a person you know. Amen? Amen. To cut all sources of discouragement. Everything that is discouraging you. Oh, you never get married. You never did. Cut that source. Amen. If it's a family member, warn them. Just tell them, you are not my creator. Whatever you're saying is discouraging me. Look at me. I will move forward. Amen. I don't need your word. That is discouraging me. I love you. I will continue to love me. But you stop talking like that. Yeah. Because I will move forward. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you do not do that, the devil will slowly, slowly destroy you. Amen. Some people, it's a habit in their family. They lock themselves up. Some families are just weird. <laughs> yeah, when there is something wrong, you won't see them. Like six months, they don't even come to church. That is wrong. It could be also a culture. In your culture, people don't talk. People don't find another person to help them for a counseling session or something. It is wrong. Hannah prayed. She did not miss any religious event. Why do you miss church? Oh, my husband is not talking to me. It has been two months. And then you are in pajamas from the, the morning to, to, to the night. What's wrong with you? Eh? How do you think you're going to make this guy talk to you? Right. Amen? Yeah. May I talk some secrets here? Yeah. No, no, no. I won't. Amen? Amen. Look after yourself. Yeah. Give him a reason to look after you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hannah did not miss anything despite constant mockeries. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Am I talking well to this morning? Yeah. I'm probably talking to a mother or to a sister. The more it goes bad, amen, the more you pray. The more you go out, the more you go shop, the, the more you go see other people, the more you come to church. You always know where you can get help, spiritual help. This is very important. Because the people you see here, God handpicked them intentionally anointed them to be able to stand in the gap for you. Amen. It's intentional. Amen. I'm going to give an example of a friend who is here uh, this morning. This is a man who has accomplished a lot of things in his life. And life has not always been nice to him. A very good man who loves God. Amen? Amen? After work, I always come, I continue my work at church. Yeah. Uh, most of the time until 7 p.m. Uh, because we have uh, um, Ezekiah at that time, I just come and then continue. And then around 7, I'm tired, I go home. And that day I was here. And then the brother came and said, okay, I need your help. Because I'm going through a problem. I knew what he was going through. Just freshly divorced, had to change province, the, pro the province, and no work. A very qualified man, a very good man. The fact that he was not getting a job in a province that he, he knows the job, he's v super qualified was really like something on top of everything he has endured so far. He prayed. He does not miss church. Many times I came here, he was here. You wonder, God, what do you want? And we all prayed for him. That day he came to see me, he said, okay, really I'm about to give up because I'm getting even sick. I said, okay, what sickness are you experiencing? He said, I feel cold, even if it's sunny, but I'm cold, my hands are cold, my feet are cold. Look, the jacket I have right now. 
But spiritually, I was just seeing something different. Yeah. He, the more he was talking to me, the, the more I was seeing something different. Amen. So, I addressed the main problem he had, and then I rebuked the disease. Yes. We prayed together. At the end of the prayer, he said to me, I'm super hot. I'm super hot. He said to me, my feet are so hot, I want to remove my shoes. This is a person that the devil was attacking seriously. Seriously. To the point where you, you feel it. It's evident. It's a fact I'm cold. I'm getting sick. Amen. But I was glad to be there and stand in the gap, Amen. fight back for him. Together we prayed. Yes. And then together we prayed for the job. He has been looking for months. Amen. Couple of weeks after that, he calls me and says, you, you won't believe? I, I just got a job. Amen. Amen. I got, he got exactly what he wanted. He told me, I don't even, uh, my job is one block away from my house. I don't even need to drive to go to my job. <laughs> Hallelujah. The job that he got was exactly what he was looking for. It is what he, he needed to do. It is what he wanted to do. Brothers and sisters, it's serious when you come to church. Maybe there is few people, but just come. You're not coming from other people. You're coming for, for a purpose. And sometimes God will allow things to happen for you to understand what he was uh, looking for. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So this was a, a small testimony of my brother Jeff who is just here. Woo. Hallelujah. You may be deeply troubled, deeply depressed, like my brother Jeff was, or the same way Hannah was. You may be here and say, it's probably too late for my situation. It has been 10 years. I have been single for 10 years. What are you talking about? I'm getting old. It is not possible anymore. I have prayed all kinds of prayers. I was here on front line. I do not miss Tuesdays. I have done everything year after year. Oh, let me remind you this morning that Hannah went through the same thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Year after year, she was struggling. Year after year, things happened. Let me remind my God, the God who is above everything, the God who, who came to rescue Jeff, the, the God who came to rescue Hannah, that some of you are getting to a point where they are extremely, deeply depressed. I want to remind my God that Hannah was deeply, deeply depressed, but she went from deeply, deeply depressed to deeply blessed. Yeah. May the same thing that happened to Hannah happens to you too. Yeah. May God switches you from deeply depressed to deeply blessed yeah. without transition yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. The same grace, Hannah's name, by the way, means grace. The same grace that fell on Hannah falls on you too. Yeah. Not only for yourself, for your, your spouse, for your children, for the job you're looking for, yes. for the disease that you are carrying for years. Yes. The same grace falls on you yes. and makes a switch like that. Yes. Despite mockeries, despite medical reports, despite all of that, despite the age, hallelujah, Amen. falls on you. Tell your enemy God is in control. Yes. God is able. Oh, hallelujah. God is able. God, who, who is in me is greater than who is in the world. 
let the one who is in the world make noise, disturbs you. It's like a mosquito on your ears. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can just do this and it's dead. Yes. May the problem you're struggling with be dead like that this morning. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Oh, some are receiving their breakthrough today. Yes. Amen. Yes. Let's move to the end. Amen. Hannah was provoked into purpose. Hallelujah. It takes sometimes an extraordinary person to go through all of that and now once curse God or curse all the people around. Hannah did not fight Penina. Hannah did not even pressure her husband to get rid of Penina. You already have all the boys you're looking for. We have many kids. Get rid of this woman. Because the Bible says, Elkanah loved Hannah. So Hannah was able to get whatever she wanted. If she wanted. She was able to go and make pressure. We may know what to do. Make pressure so that guy gets rid of this woman. Hallelujah. Who was wicked anyways. But no. She chose to, to, to suffer silently. She chose not to fight. Amen. One thing that Hannah did not understand, she was carried the future in her, but she did not know. Amen. Amen. Hannah was looking for a son, a child, but God was looking for a prophet. Yes. Amen. Hannah did not know that. She carried a prophet in her, but was one only looking for a son. That is where the problem was. Amen? God is not going to release what you want. Amen? Amen? God was not looking for another son from Elkanah. He had already ten. Are you getting me? Yes. He already turned. He did not want any other son. But God was looking for something else yes. through Hannah. But Hannah did not understand that. God needed a prophet. And from who Hannah? Hannah who means grace. Maybe Hannah was a disgrace in the eyes of Penina, in the eyes of all the en other enemies. But in God's eyes, Grace was upon her. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But because she loved God, because she resisted temptation, hallelujah, that caused a change. That caused a switch in her prayer. Amen. Amen. Hannah changed her prayer. Yes. Are you following me? Yes. She was not praying for a son anymore. She started praying for a prophet. That allow God now to release the prophet. Because if you pray for a son, and then God gives you something you're not looking for, it's going to be a problem. There has to be perfect alignment. God's will dominates. But if you do not understand God's will, you are going to pray until you turn blue. It's not going to happen. Verse 6 says, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son. And then she adds this, and that's where the miracle comes from. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. Because she resisted provocation, persecution, mockeries, that thing that was meant to destroy her, make her lose her mind, push her almost to, to commit suicide. By the grace of God, that same thing propelled her into her purpose. If Penina was not increasing the temperature, she could have never humbled herself to the point where she says, God, just give me a son, and I will give this son back. The son will work for you. The son will live here. No razor will remove her hair. Not even one. 
That's where the miracle comes from. This is a high revelation for her. It does not come when you fight. When you, there is a small provocation and there you go, she's fighting again. Hallelujah. Are you able to carry what you're praying for? Hannah was not able to carry what she was praying for. She did not know really what she was praying for until she became able to carry her prayer. Amen. And that's where the miracle happens. My question to you, how long have you been waiting? How long? What are you, have you been waiting for, first of all? And how long have you been waiting? How do you interact with God and with others while you are waiting? While you are misunderstood, you are mocked, stepped on, I mean, disgraced by everybody. What do you do? How do you do what you do? Hannah understood one thing. She needed to change her prayer. What did you understand today? Let's get to the end. Let's close our eyes. We can probably stand up. I'm going to close your eyes and, and look deep, deep within you. If this morning something is really bugging you, you are very depressed, you are discouraged, your heart is agitated, you feel lost, this is the time to go to another level of prayer. This is the time to change your prayer. That's what God is telling me this morning. Hannah had to change her prayer for the miracle to happen. Change your prayer until your pastor asks you, are you drunk? Because your behavior will be just bizarre. Let people ask you if you are drunk. Because your prayer has gone to a different level. <clears throat> and you will say, I am not drunk. I am just deeply troubled. But I will worship my Lord once again. I will worship the author of my salvation, the author of my peace, the author of my joy one more time. I shall praise him regardless. Hallelujah. He is my God. He is my Savior. He is able. Hannah said, I need a son. But God said, I need a prophet. The son did not come until her prayer changed. God does not give you because you believe you deserve. Hannah deserved the same way Penina deserved. But God did not give to Hannah what she thought she deserved. Probably Hannah deserved even more than Penina. Certainly. Hallelujah. She accepted to suffer. She went through depression. But she changed her prayer. She remained focused on God. The only one who is able to change anything. That switch paved the way to fruitfulness. Brothers and sisters, if you're listening to me, are you ready to remain focused on the only one who is able, the only one who can move mountains, the only one who can change your situation in a matter of a second? Are you able to remain focused? Are you able to change your prayer? The decisions you took today will determine your future. You have certainly suffered a lot from people mocking you and then from everything around you. What your parents are saying, your co-workers, you have been waiting, you have hoped, and it has been a long time. Every day you pray for an end. 
Today, take a decision to be quiet. Take a decision to stay mute when provoked. Suffer silently when mocked, but pray earnestly. Hallelujah. If you do that, I believe and I declare an end to your suffering. An end to this moment of stress, to this moment of depression you're going through, to this moment of anxiety. I declare an end to that. And I pray and I declare that you receive what was intended for you in the first place. What was meant for you in the first place. Oh, hallelujah. I declare that you will receive what was purposely designed for you. The prophet, the son of Hannah, was not designed for anybody else but her. Penina was having children year after year, but never, she has never had a prophet. The prophet was not designed for her. The prophet was designed for Hannah. I pray today and I declare that what was purposely designed for you, you receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Time has come now to bear fruit. I proclaim that you will bear fruit. Time has come for Hannah to be productive. I declare that you will be productive in Jesus' name. No weapons from against you shall prosper. Let the devil agitate himself over there. But you stay focused. I declare that you will bear fruit. I declare that you will be productive in Jesus' name. I declare that your enemy will lose. Hallelujah. I declare that. May God remember you. May God remember you. May God remember your faithfulness. May God remember your giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not give up. I declare an end to your suffering today. Do not believe it's too late. It's not late. God has not said it's late. It's not late for your children. Oh, it will switch around. They are probably going the wrong way. Just focus on God. Focus on God. Hallelujah. Now focus on what they're doing. This is their time. Just pray and God will bring them back again. Bring them back again. Hallelujah. Focus on God. I declare that all will go well. As long as you resist to temptation. As long as you don't go fight. May God bless you richly in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive and agree, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.